A very good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining. My name is Rona Biju, and I will be your host for today's webinar on the topic VAT Healthcare Industry. Before we dive right into the webinar, I would like to give a brief introduction about our company, ITC Accounting and Tax Consultancy. It is one of the most top and most reliable tax agency firms in the UAE. In a short span of time, our team mastered how to give clients the best tax solutions. You can expect an uncompromised attitude when it comes to quality and professionalism. We deliver a sleek and professional outcome that sets us apart from the competition. With the leadership of Mr. Ahmed Sharfuddin, we've already positioned ourselves as the VAT and excise tax specialist in the market. We have a fast-growing team of qualified and dedicated professionals with innovative and commercial approaches to meet today's highly challenging business environment. By bringing the best team to service, highly experienced tax and finance specialists in the industry, ITC will continue to create long-term relationships with various businesses by having the ability to deliver as exceptional service that is satisfactory on all levels of quality and speed. As a testimony to our strategic and proven approach, most of the customers we serve are generated through referrals and repeated businesses. Moving on, I would like to give a brief introduction about our panelists for today's webinar, Ms. Nikita Bhandari. Nikita is a seasoned tax professional with close to a decade of experience in a variety of tax related fields. She has a well rounded understanding of the industry and has owned her skills through various years of hands on experience. Her expertise in tax advisory and pre audits has made her a valuable asset to the team as she is able to handle the most important cases and clients with utmost professionalism. Nikita is known for her attention to detail and her strong work ethic. She takes pride in her homework and approaching every task with a dedication to getting it right. Her approach has earned her the trust of clients and the respect of colleagues across all departments. She's the leader within the team and takes the time to mentor and teach her colleagues. Helping to raise the overall level of knowledge and skills within the organization with Nikita on the team, clients can rest assured that their tax needs will be handled with care and expertise. Now, I would like to hand over to Mrs. Nikita to start off with the webinar. Good morning, one and all. Welcome to the webinar regarding our healthcare industry. Uh, thank you, Ms. Rona, for this warm introduction and those warm words. So going forward today, uh, now we are doing a very specific um, healthcare industry webinar. That is, it is related only to the healthcare services uh, in relation to the UAE. So as we have in front in our screen, the topics that we are going to discuss today, that is introduction, the laws, exactly how the uh, preventive healthcare and the non-preventive van has been treated, uh, what are the tax implications and uh, the do's and don'ts, and also on the noising part. Okay, so as I just said that regarding, we are going to have on a very industry specific base today, our webinar that is on UAE healthcare service. So very recently, not recently, I should say, in fact, a long time, uh, this industry has been one of the key factors in terms of the VAT implications because it has been granted with a lot of uh, exemptions and particularly the service that this industry has been providing, the, all the services, the preventive healthcare is technically zero rated. This is in the in, intention to also promote uh, this kind of a social service and also uh, considering it is for the um, health something a life-saving thing so it's been considered as zero rated but also you must know that not every service that the healthcare industry provides is considered zero rated some of them which are not related to the preventive sector that is considered as a taxable supply so we can see that in the coming slides and in the coming presentation so that's what exactly an introduction to UAE healthcare services going forward so we have the VAT laws on the healthcare. So as per Article 845 of the Federal Law Decree Number 8 of 2017, this uh, preventive healthcare services was specially considered as a zero-rated supply. So as I was saying that uh, the healthcare services has been specifically been zero-rated as per Article 45 of Federal Decree Law Number 8 of 2017. So any supply of preventive basic healthcare services related to goods and service and the import of this concerned goods and service will be considered as uh, the zero rated as per the executive regulation that is per, as per article 41 of the executive regulation federal law number 8. Okay. Uh, 
Article 41, that is zero rating of the healthcare services, actually the previous slide, please. Uh, so that is in Article 41 specifically says that any pharmaceutical products or, or any healthcare services which has been considered as a preventive. Now, preventive means that is something a life-threatening or something that is which is very mandatory to be done in order to go in, uh, you know, for the living purpose of an individual. That's a preventive healthcare service. So whatever that has been identified by the cabinet decision, that is as per article as the cabinet decision 56 of 2017, um, those products or those services which have been listed above, uh, listed in that cabinet decision has been technically specifically zero rated and uh, any medical equipment as well then uh, any other goods not covered by paragraphs a and b of this clause that is of article 41 of the uh, executive regulation which are supplied in course of supplying a person with zero rated that are necessary okay so anything apart from the pharmaceutical product or the medical equipment if it is necessary the services of the goods uh, for that preventive healthcare service like the, for the surgery or for the uh, treatment of that individual that will be considered as zero rated okay so now going forward to the next slide now we see that in the vat and healthcare we have two types of segregation here now, we must understand now from very the beginning, I'm saying there is a preventive and non-preventive healthcare. I've given a brief description of what a preventive healthcare means about. A preventive healthcare means that is something to save an individual's life. And, and it's something that is basically to avoid that person from dying in a very layman terms. So those are the preventive healthcare services, which is considered zero rated. Here, there are few examples listed on the screen. That could be the vaccines, uh, that could be the medical and dental services. Uh, this is also specified as per Article 41 of the Federal Decree Law. And any other medical supplies mentioned in context that is happening in decision number 56. Okay. Now, as I mentioned before, that not every healthcare service is something that has to be treated for a life threatening decision or something for the good health of an individual. Some things just could be to enhance a person's personality or something that, uh, you know, like they wanted to have best, better features compared to the originals. That's called the enhancement. So that would be like the cosmetic surgeries, something which is not listed or not um, recognized by the cabinet decision or the DHA regulatory and uh, the medical tools such as the mask, the gloves, the lab coats. So even though those in like in the mask, gloves and lab coats, the thing is that there are a bit um, concern or you could say friction in this on the understanding like some people say why not mask, gloves and hand gloves and lab coats and why they are not considered as zero rated since it will be used in a surgery. Now consider this part. If they're used as a package when they'll be built in a surgery required, necessary for the surgery to happen, yes, it could be zero rated. But in, in the, the person who is a supplier and who's only just selling those masks, gloves, lab coats, just for its supply, that is a sale, right? So that definitely that cannot be recognized as zero rated. So in the previous slide, how we saw that any other medical products or service that is required for the preventive healthcare services, it can be considered zero rate. So this is one of an example for that, that uh, those additional tools or those additional uh, accessories that is required to perform such kind of a service, then definitely zero rated. But if a person who's particularly supplying it to the hospital, supplying it to the pharmaceuticals, that is his own business, definitely that would be a 5% tax. Okay, this has been come up because we've seen it in many of our cases, many of our client base, and thus we are addressing this issue very specifically as an example. Going forward. So now there are in the preventive healthcare also, there, there is this combination when you're giving a service to business to business, business to consumers, the non-preventive. So one of the uh, scenario what we see here is a dramatic implementation of business to business services. Now see, there are many cases that certain hospitals may not have certain kind of facilities, but they may have a tie up 
with a bigger hospital where there are better equipments they are equipped with well facilities to treat the patients to treat the individuals so they may have a tie up that just in case if i refer certain uh, patients to you uh, there would be some commission some you know an consideration between transact into healthcare or for the that individual this transaction be considered as a taxable supply because this doesn't come under a preventive healthcare which was described or noted under the cabinet decision of 56 or uh, approved by the recognized authority as a dha so definitely this kind of a transaction that occurs that's a 5% so in the further examples here is given the referral labs now we are very much aware that in this um, healthcare industry this is a very common practice that certain health uh, lab the labs they don't have um, equipments or certain facilities to test certain kind of viruses or certain kind of reports so what they do is they will give it to outside the country so now in this case if it is going outside the country and you're getting the reports back again it is an import of service here and if it is uh, within ua it's a 5% taxable because it is a b2b earlier it's a preventive healthcare but this kind of an arrangement is actually a supply of service for a preventive healthcare to be zero rated it is very very important that it should be uh, notified under the cabinet decision and should be recognized with the dha so this if it is not then definitely it's a 5% thing then hospitals or clinics as i explained and external doctors now external doctors are like if you have an expert doctor coming into your um, hospital or in clinic to provide their expert services to the individuals that require urgent um, attention or medical care then in that case even when the doctor is coming Uh, like again this doctors cannot be on individual basis depends if it's an individual basis obviously he is not registered under vat but if it is like a b2b doctor is also having a trn or it is having a sole establishment like a clinic and then it's coming to here then there will be an invoicing part which happens that is 5% at that case okay so this for the vat on the preventive healthcare service which is the first scenario b2b now let's see in the next slide which goes for b2c that is from business to customers now in the whenever you visit your hospitals whenever you visit a clinic a very well established clinic you will definitely have some nice uh, relaxation centers like a coffee or some uh, you know some recreational centers or recreational services which are provided so as to give relief to those uh, individuals who accompany the patients okay so like we have the coffee shop we have the flower shop you have the newspaper deliveries you have the canteens and all that stuff now you must understand that this kind of a service even if it is you're saying that no this is going to the patient it cannot be a zero rated this is definitely technically a supply of service within a hospital so definitely this is a 5% thing this cannot be considered zero rated just under the impression or under the understanding that this has been operated under the uh, a healthcare service or facility which has its services uh, uh, recognized as zero rated service okay so if there is something which is apart from any preventive healthcare service that you are providing like those coffee shops or flat no doubt even if it is going to patients room as well from there to the patients but yet this is a taxable supply of service it cannot be a zero rated now a very unique example we have in the end that's a foreign insurance coverage we have seen uh, this um, in some of the instances of our um, clients or in the audit place that we the some foreigners who come here they may have a tendency to visit a hospital or a healthcare facility here for to get something treated or some un unexpected incident happens or occurrence happens and they have to visit get a healthcare facility here and then in that case if whatever amount or like uh, the like the services have been charged to them that will be zero rated no matter what because the services are providing in ue and as also preventive healthcare 
then it has to be zero rated even if it is a foreign uh, insurance coverage if an international insurance is covering your claims and providing um, uh, to the hospital yet it will be considered as a zero rated supply of service since it was something of a rare case i thought it should be bring to your notice so i hope that uh, helps uh, going forward the next slide that states for the non preventive healthcare so in the preventive healthcare we covered business to business we covered uh, business to customers so now that two scenarios are i hope they are very well understood in case if you have any queries feel free to reach out on a qna we will be very happy to help you up with any of your concerns and queries so this now we are talking about is non preventive healthcare so as we mentioning saying that the 5% chart that is for the cosmetic surgeries now in the dentals are also considered as zero rated okay as for the law but now you have some kind of uh, treatment that is only for enhancement like if you going like the beauty pageants uh, the miss world or the miss universe they go for some kind of an uh, dental implants or just for the enhancing their features or enhancing uh, that shine so this is not something covered as a preventive health care those will be considered as a cosmetic care and those cosmetic dental care will be considered as a 5% taxable supplier service they will never be considered as zero rated my point in order to highlight this because i had uh, this kind of a concern coming up that if it is a dental service is being considered as a zero rated then any services under it also should be covered under uh, the uh, as a zero rated but no uh there are few rare cases but such things which only for the beauty enhancements or something that to look beautiful uh they cannot be considered in the dental industry it cannot be considered as a zero rated it will be a 5% okay so like we also have an examples here like beautification relaxation spas therapies yes every kind of a spa the therapies that is given to you in your even some hospitals very rare some very luxury hospitals do give you a spa or some uh, therap therapies and all those are considered as a relaxation therapy they are just to make you feel re relaxed not a preventive or not something any life threatening thing so definitely those cannot be considered as a preventive one and the task there will be fibers but um like the ayurveda uh ayurveda therapies or there is some other the natural therapies now these therapies if they are to heal an individual for their um something that to cure them to live them have a good longevity of their life then those can be considered zero rated okay so this is very important that we understand the basis of the uh disclosure of the transactions or the disclosure of the uh assessing the transaction how exactly it should be zero rated or five percent please don't go under the terminology just because it is be stated as by the law that it has to be since it is a healthcare it should be zero no it's not the case we have to understand why exactly that particular transaction that nature of service is being ordered or is being promoted okay going forward please next slide please okay so this um is an article it's just a disclosure article which also has been very very well specified by the fta law again that is as per article 2 of cabinet decision of 56 of 2017 the supply of medications and medical equipment registered with the ministry of health and prevention or imported with its permission or approval shall be subject to tax at zero rate so now this is not something very uh, this article actually was not um, doesn't have any add uh, uh, like value addition to it but it is just it has been very specifically and explicitly uh, stated out by the law as well that see just because the nature of the industry is zero rated it doesn't mean that it is uh, only if it is registered with the ministry of health and prevention disclosed by the cabinet then only it can be considered zero rated so considering everything all and all as zero rated will not serve the purpose okay so that is why this kind of an article was brought out just to simplify and just explicitly put it out that yes 
only those medications and medical equipment will be considered zero rate going forward. Now we come for the invoicing and tax return. So now we have discussed um, the healthcare services. We have discussed the certain areas, certain examples, something rare. How exactly it has to be treated? The basis, the core of it. Okay. So now we will dis we'll discuss the invoicing and the tax credit notes about it. Now it's very important in a VAT documentation is everything. Okay. Without documentation, you you cannot either claim, you cannot even pay. So definitely, invoicing is an important and integral part of the VAT returns when you come down to it. So there are few important points when an invoice has to be created. That is, a tax invoice has to be clearly displayed. The name, address, TRN of the register making the supply has to be there. The date of issuing the tax invoice, the description of the goods or services, the total consideration and tax amount charged. So you may say that why exactly in a healthcare industry invoicing is such an important part that it has to be included in this webinar. Trust me, we have seen many, many documents. While the implementation of 2018, I consider it was a very difficult phase in order to decode the implementation of the law and to decode how exactly their uh, applicability comes into the transactions considering to the healthcare industry, which is one of the most unique kind of form of services that we provide in the market. Invoicing is something that the uh, hospitals or the healthcare facility has been not been following uprightly correctly. And this has been, you know, the problem and many of the healthcare industries has been facing issues. Some, the FTS has been having you penalized them or it has to go for the voluntary disclosures and all. So that is why it is very important for us to understand how exactly you must disclose your transactions as per a 5% or zero rated. And also how do you invoice it out? And while accepting the invoice also, how important it is to keep these key points in point, the, these key points of the invoicing in mind. So that whenever you even accept an invoice from supplier, they are acceptable to claim the input tax on the same. And even while when you are issuing an invoice to your customers, it should be a proper as per Article 59 uh, of the law that these points should be followed in that. Okay. So that is why this invoicing is being so very prominently highlighted in this webinar. Going forward. Okay, so now when we come back, now this is the when we reach to the end stage of our webinar, where we have summarized uh, the complete points. It's like a chart, so you can also have a great look. Whatever we discussed, that is preventive healthcare services, including vaccination, it's a zero-rated supply. Healthcare services aimed at treating humans, including medical and dental services, zero-rated. Um, other healthcare services that are not for treatment are not preventive. Elective cosmetic surgeries required those are direct five percent, which are medical medicines and medical equipment as listed in cabinet decision that should be zero rated. Medicines and medical equipments not listed in cabinet decision is five percent. Other medical supplies like we discussed the gloves, uh, uh, black coat, those could be five percent. Okay, so this is just to summarize. I hope this uh, chart helps you so as to, you know, have a very cheat sheet kind of thing whenever you are very concerned about how this disclosure of transaction has to be. Um, there's one more small point that I would like to highlight. It is in terms of the invoicing. Now, uh, there is a case in this uh, healthcare industries that before a surgery, before any major surgeries or like dental surgeries, you have to give an advance or a down payment before the surgery happens. And it is very important, it is very well stated in the law that any advance consideration received has to be tax invoiced. So we have seen that in many of the hospitals or clinics, big or small, those advances has not been invoiced at that stage. Rather, a receipt has been given at the end of the consideration or the end of the service. Sorry, at the end of the service, when the, the surgery is completed, the tax invoice has been uh, provided and it has been uh, paid to the government as well. It has been done. Now, the risk here is what? 
in the books of accounts if you claim it as a receivable it will be okay it will not touch your pnl it will be in your balance sheet asset side very well okay but you must understand that any res- advances received as per the vat law it has to be invoiced and it has to be paid to the government then and it has to be not waited until the complete procedure is done why there is a risk at times the surgery may take some more time and um, you may uh, may skip your tax period okay if it is monthly or quarterly you no know, you may just skip the tax period for exactly when the particular tax period has to end like if it is jan to march if the first patient has come in the end of the march your surgery is happening in april tax period skips so in that case it's always in a follow conservative approach that any advances that you collect from the uh, customers before a surgery please invoice it for that part of the amount and the balance part you can invoice it later once the surgery is done when the consideration is received it's a it's a very safe approach rather than making it as a receivable and uh, invoicing at in the end okay so that was a small tip that because we have seen this also occurring a lot and we really do not want to get so many negative attraction from the fpo so summarizing with this i guess we complete our uh, the webinar it is a very brief one and it has been only to sp- industry specific hope we been able to um, uh, cover all the concerns and the issues regarding to healthcare services but in case if you feel like if there is something miss out if there is any concern if there is anything that you would like to discuss or want to get clarified please feel free to contact our team and we shall be there to uh, you know clarify all your concerns and doubts thank you for being there i really appreciate your time and your presence here thank you thank you mrs nikita for making this session so insightful and engaging thank you all for joining us and sharing in this interesting experience your presence and active participation have truly made the session valuable and impactful We look forward to connecting with you again in our future webinars. Until then, for any further queries regarding excise VAT or corporation tax, kindly drop us an email or give us a call. The details are mentioned on the screen. Thank you all and have a good day.